It's not very often that I get a chance to review capture cards or dongles, despite the fact that I know a fair share about them myself. So naturally, I jumped at the chance to review the Magewell XI100D USB HDMI capture dongle. However, after over a month of it being in my possession, I'm just kind of left with the question, who is it for? Some of you might be asking what exactly this little black box actually does, so let me go ahead and address that first. What this does is it takes a video signal from HDMI up to anywhere up to 1900 by 1200, which includes 1080p, at up to 60 frames per second, and spits it out via USB 3.0 to your computer. Not only does it do that in the format you chose, but it does that in pretty much whatever format you choose. So you can upscale it, downscale it, have the frame rate, keep the frame rate, etc. Which is kind of cool. That's actually the great thing about this capture dongle is its flexibility. It's able to deliver completely uncompressed video as long as you're hooked up via USB 3.0 and have a computer capable of handling it or you can compress it in your video recording software as much as you want and it doesn't seem to have any trouble handling that. It is important to note here that this is designed to be a plug and play device, so it does not actually come with any video recording or streaming software. It is made to work automatically in Mac, Windows, or Linux with whatever video recording or streaming software you're already using. So personally, I tested it in OBS and Virtual Dub. I used Virtual Dub to record as high quality of a recording as possible, and then I used OBS to record a basic quality recording, as well as stream it and things like that. For some of my tests, I hooked up a game console which delivered a 720p 60 frames per second signal, and within OBS I was able to record at 720p 30, record at 720p 60, upscale to 1080p 30 or 60 at a very high frame rate, all without using up any CPU usage whatsoever. It was, re you know, it was using some basic CPU usage that OBS requires just to rec to create the video file. But despite this, in theory, just delivering a video signal, I was able to upscale and downscale and play with it however much I want without it taxing my system. Which, with most video cards, be that Blackmagic or even the Elgato cards, if you're using third-party software and changing the resolution or frame rate in some degree. It actually uses a heavy CPU load. With this, I was able to tell it to output whatever resolution I wanted, and it just, it's like the card did it all itself. And keep in mind, this is only a little more than three inches long, half an inch thick, and about an inch and a half wide, and it doesn't really get that hot either, so it will fit in any setup. As we're looking at the physical design of the product here, it is a very small black box. It has the Magewell logo on the front, as well as what they call a power and action LED. The power one just indicates, or it's supposed to just indicate that it's hooked up by a USB with power going to it, and the action is supposed to indicate when there's actually like data being transferred. However, anytime I've ever plugged this in, both lights always just stayed lit up, even if I never had anything plugged into HDMI. So to me, it's just two power lights, but there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. On one side, you have the USB 3 A to B connection here, and then you have one HDMI input on the side. Now that brings me to another point with this card, which is actually a negative, is there is no HDMI pass-through. You only have an input, there is no output. So if you need your connection to go to another display, such as a monitor, a TV, another capture solution, you will need to split your HDMI connection prior to it getting to this, to this device. Thankfully, HDMI splitters are only about 15 bucks on Amazon, and they just require an AC adapter and you're good to go. However, that is something you will want to take into consideration. Secondly, the dongle is designed to only accept PCM uncompressed audio through the HDMI input. This means that if you have a device that's sending encoded audio by Adobe or DTS or its own kind of encoding, it's not gonna get along too well with this card. And my game console tests, which technically can support PCM uncompressed audio, but by default they do not, I was getting completely out of sync audio, I was getting audio just dropping in and out and just warping all over the place. This did not happen when I connected it to my camcorder via HDMI out, in which it had just raw audio go into it. But using a game console with any sort of like compressed or encoded audio, it just it did not like it at all. I would also like to take time to point out, which you can un watch my unboxing somewhere on the screen here, it came in packaging that looked like it came off a Walmart shelf cheap plastic stapled together with a little 
hanging hook to be hung on a shelf. That's not what I would expect from a product that's this premium. Now granted the product itself is very premium feeling, it's well built, it's well designed, but the packaging was just, it left very very much to be desired. Despite all the obvious positives about this device, given the price, $300 or give or take a few depending on whether it's on sale, where you're buying it, what country you're in, etc. I can't help but to be left with the question, who the heck is it for? It's certainly not for game streamers, as the audio incompatibility with encoded audio and the weird out of sync issues I was running into and completely unable to alleviate with game consoles just completely rules out that factor as it would re ruin any game recording. So my next best option would be sports broadcasters. For a while I interned with a sports broadcasting group that handled, they run their own streaming site and they handled live broadcasts of high school basketball and football games. We built a small little streaming computer which had two Blackmagic Intensity Pro cards inside of it which we used to switch between the camcorders in Wirecast. One issue that we always ran into was especially when the camcorders were putting in different resolutions or we needed to deinterlace, etc. was how much CPU usage using both cards required. That's what made this really, really great, is with the Magewell Capture dongle, pretty much all CPU usage was eliminated because the dongle was doing all of the work. So this would be absolutely fantastic in this setup. However, I was unable to test, uh, you know, I did not have access to that specific machine to test with this dongle versus the Avermedia and see if there was a huge CPU usage. And I was not able to test because I only have one, I was not able to test a system in which multiple dongles were hooked up at the same time to see if that added any extra stress on the system. However, I feel confident in saying this would still be a pretty good solution for that kind of setup. And given the price of this dongle, I'm not actually sure anybody else would be interested in it. Game capture solutions are much cheaper, usually around $100 to $150, and even the mid to low range regular broadcasting cards, such as the Blackmagic cards, are still quite a bit cheaper. However, none of them have the flexibility of this Magewell dongle, especially Blackmagic cards are as they are the most unflexible cards I've ever used in my entire life. So it's just a matter of trade-off for price and compatibility with the flexibility of the dongle. Speaking of trade-offs, with this video's sponsor, Green Man Gaming, you can trade in your old game purchases towards credit for new game purchases. GMG has a wide catalog of plenty of fun and discounted games, many of them Steam compatible, that you can check out. And if you click the link in the description below, you can get a discount towards your first purchase on Green Man Gaming. So check out their link in the description below and get you some fun games to play for the weekend. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Magewell XI100D USB HDMI capture dongle, because that's certainly a mouthful. Leave us a like if you liked it, leave us a dislike if you disliked it, and leave us a comment telling us why. Links to the Magewell's website as well as the product link on Amazon will be in the description below, along with a link to our website where you can check out an FAQ with all the questions you may have about us, our setup, what we're doing, etc., and a live calendar of our video upload schedules. As soon as I schedule up a video, it goes on that calendar with a video link and related product links and things like that. So you can check it out and be ready ahead of time and see what we've uploaded in case you've missed something. So check that out in the description below as well. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.